If you've been having issues with your Windows 11 PC running slower than normal, I'm going to give you 12 of my top tips to help speed up your computer. Let's jump in. So the first and foremost thing, and this is something I try to do every couple of days if I don't already, is to shut down or restart your computer. This is a nice kind of refresh, clean slate that you can do with your computer. And you do that just by clicking on the little Windows icon here, going over by your name, you'll see a little power. You click on that and you can either shut down or restart. And sometimes you'll see there'll be a little orange icon next to this, which means that it needs to restart and update. And that's another key thing that'll happen is that sometimes there's bug fixes that need to happen and it'll notify you when that needs to happen. That's an always an easy go-to, two clicks of the button and kind of get a fresh clean slate on your computer. All right, tip number two is to disable startup apps. So whenever you refresh or restart your computer, there is a set of apps that automatically launch. And obviously the more apps that are running in the background on your computer, whether you're using them or not, is going to slow down your processor speed. So let me show you how to disable apps if you don't need to run at startup. So to do that, you're just gonna go to the search bar here. You're gonna start typing task manager and it should pop up there just click on that and it's going to open up a window like this now we're going to come into the screen a couple of different times but for this one we're going to go over here where it says startup apps just click on that and this shows you all the apps that are enabled or disabled on startup enabled means that anytime your computer starts up it's going to launch that app now this does two things one is the more apps that you have enabled to launch when you're starting up your computer is going to increase the time it takes to start up your computer first of all and then any of these apps that start up automatically are going to be running in the background again whether you're using them or not so what i like to do is periodically go through here and just make sure that you disable anything that you don't want to be running in the background if there's an app that you use every day and you need it to launch then obviously you want that to be enabled but as you can see i already went through here and did some of this like i have Dropbox, I don't use that every day, so I don't need that to launch at startup. Evernote, I don't use that every day, so I have that disabled. So if you see one over here, like Grammarly, okay, I don't need that to be launched at startup, so I'm gonna click over here where it says enabled, and you just right click on enabled, and you can see it says disabled here, click on that, and now it's disabled. Now, it is currently still running because I've restart my computer, but now the next time that this launches and you reboot your computer, it'll not launch that app. And you can go through and just dial this in to your personal preferences. But the less apps that you have enabled at startup, the faster your computer is going to start up and the faster your computer is going to run. Now, while we're talking about apps, another important thing to do is step number three, which is uninstall any unused apps. So even when you have an app installed, even if you don't open it, even if it's not launching at startup, it's using up space on your computer, which is going to slow down your computer. So if there is any apps that you're not using, I think it's good to kind of do a once over and uninstall anything that you don't need at the time. So to do that, we're just gonna, again, go over to our Windows icon, click on that, and go up here to settings. And that's gonna open up this window here. And then we're just gonna go across the side where you see apps, click on that. And then again, you wanna go over up here to the top where it says installed apps, click on that, it takes a minute to load. And you can see here, this is all of the apps that I have installed on my computer. So we can go through this from this screen and uninstall or delete anything that is not being used. So let me just see here. All right, so here's an app called Orb. I installed it, I was using it for a little bit, I don't use it anymore. So I'm just gonna go over to these three little dots here. And you can see this is only taking up 42 megabyte, but some apps take up you know, a couple of gigabyte, like here's one that's 1 1.99 gigabyte, right? So you just go over here, click on the little three dots. You see an option where it says uninstall, click on that. This will uninstall the app, uninstall. And, and it just takes a moment here. And sometimes they'll have specific steps for the app that'll be asked to do. And that's it, that's uninstalled, that's removed from the computer. 
Okay, and then you can go through here and just repeat that on any of the apps. So as I had mentioned, apps take up space on your computer and the more storage that's being used on your computer, the slower your computer will be. So that takes me to step number four, which is free up disk space. So to, again, to do that, we're just gonna go up to the settings, click on the Windows icon here, go to settings. And for this, we're gonna go to system then we're going to go over here to storage so again here's the installed apps here's other files but what we're going to focus on here is temporary files so if you click on the little arrow next to this so again going in here every so often and finding you know you can toggle on off some of these things like i want to keep my download folder so that's toggled off you scroll down i'll go ahead and delete the recycle bin which is 24 megabyte and you can kind of scroll through there if there's anything specific that you want to keep or not keep and then you go up here and you just click on remove files and it's going to warn you that it's going to remove these temporary files and you click continue and this depending on how frequently you do this may take a little bit of time so i'm just going to kind of let this run in the background while we're doing checking some other things so i'm just going to minimize this and so next we're going to talk about updating your windows and drivers as i mentioned when you reboot your computer it may have a little orange icon saying that it needs to add some upgrade dates for windows but you can do that manually as well again if you go into the settings so we're just going to click on this go to settings and you see it's still working on the temporary files and what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to windows update and over here just click on check for updates and in my case it's coming back and saying i'm all up to date so i don't have any drivers that need to be updated again your, yours might be different now you can also go down here to advanced options and you click on this you can go to optional updates and you say i have two available here and so here's an optional windows update that you could select and then you scroll down here and there's also driver update those are sort of the backbone operating for different apps sometimes they need to update the drivers so you can click on that and then you go download and install and it will work on installing those in the background so what you see here are the very important must have these updates and then to a lesser effect the, there are optional updates that you can select if you wish but i found a lot of times just staying completely updated is always going to help your computer run a little faster and then while we're talking about this let's go to step number six which is rolling back bad updates so as i just said i found that most of the time updates will help your computer sometimes updates hurt your computer because there's there's an error or there's something that's that was wrong on their end or a bad install or something like that so you can roll those back and basically undo installing that update so to do that we're going to stay in the settings window here we're going to click on system we're going to scroll down to recovery and so you click on this and then you can see down here there is a go back so this allows you to go back 10 days of updates so i'm going to click on this and you see when i click on this any updates that i have were older than 10 days ago and it's not available if there is a update that you made recently and it's causing problems with your computer as long as it's within that 10 day window you can click on that and it'll roll back to that update and they also have a note here that you could completely roll back to version 10 of windows if if you're really having some issues i think it's totally up to you how you want to handle that or how far you want to go back or or what but i always feel like moving forward and trying to keep on top of getting the updates to me personally has just always seemed to serve me well all right now shifting gears a little bit let's talk about the power usage of your computer which is tip number seven so you're going to search for power plan and you want to go to choose a power plan so you click on that and so you have a couple of different options here there's balanced and you can read about this power saver and then if you go to additional plans scroll down here you have high performance which yes uses more power but if your concern is speeding up your computer that's the best option to go so we're just going to click on that click on change plan settings and you have some options here to when you turn off your display when you put your computer to sleep and you can change those as you see fit so maybe i want to do one hour and we'll do 30 minutes there and then from here you just want to click on save changes and you're all set tip number eight is to set the proper gpu or graphic processing unit 
So this is one of the main engines in your computer that, that processes all of the visual graphics of your computer. So obviously, if you're not using the right one, it's going to slow things down depending on what you're trying to do with your computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the settings once again, click on settings. From here, we want to go to system, then go to display. Then all the way down to the bottom, you'll see graphics. Click on that. And then you can go down through here, and if there's any apps that you're using primarily, like let's say the VLC media player that I'm playing a lot of videos back, and that's where I'm having issues of it slowing down, you could toggle down to here, and you just want to make sure that this is toggled to optimize for Windows games. So you could click on that or toggle that on and off. And likewise, you can go through any of these apps, let's say Handbrake, when we want to make sure that that's toggled on. You can also toggle it on up here to make sure that it's always optimizing the best graphics card for each of the individual apps. And then down here, there's also advanced graphics setting, which is hardware accelerated GPO scheduling. So you could turn that on. One of the tips is tip number nine, which is to disable some of the visual effects that will help optimize your performance, but then just kind of uh, take some of the shine off of the, the display of your computer. So we're going to stay in settings over here, and we're just going to go to accessibility, click on that. And there's a lot of options here, but what we want to go to is visual effects. Click on this. There is this really cool effect where some of the background apps have sort of this transparent effect, which looks cool, but requires a lot of processing power and graphic processing. So you could toggle this off. And then likewise, here's an animation effect where windows open up and close. And you could also turn that off if you wish as well. Now, tip number 10 is to scan for viruses and threats. So far, we've been talking about how to optimize things that are supposed to be on your computer. Well, now let's talk about getting things that are not supposed to be on your computer off. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Windows Security. So we're going to go in the search bar and type in Windows Security. And it's going to open up your security settings here. And we're going to go to Virus and Threat Protection. And first, you want to make sure that that is on. So you're going to click Turn On. You can't see this, but it's confirming that I want to turn Windows Security on. You click Yes. Right now, it shows that there's no threats currently, but then you can do a quick scan, and it's going to scan over your computer and make sure that there's no threats or viruses that are on your computer. So here it says it's going to take another minute to do this, this scan, and if it pops up with any finding anything, you can remove or quarantine those things from there. So while that's running, I'm going to move on to step number 11, which is to enable game mode. Now, this is specifically for if you're trying to optimize your computer for playing games. But I found this also helps if you're doing a lot of graphic interface, like if you're doing video editing or photo editing, things like that. This also helps. So again, we're going to go to our settings, open that up. We want to go to gaming and you want to go to game mode. You just want to toggle this on if it's off. And again, this is going to prioritize the speed and performance of your computer over anything else. And tip number 12, this is a last resort. If all else fails and you're still having trouble with your computer running as fast as you want it to, and you've gone through all of these steps and everything's turned on, everything's cleaned up, you could do a factory reset. And obviously that's a very extreme thing. It's going to remove everything off of your computer and I'll walk you through how to do that. But again, I warn you, this is this is a very extreme step. So again, we're going to go back to our settings, open this up, and we're going to go to system, and we're going to go to recovery. Scroll down here and click on this arrow for recovery. You're going to click on reset PC, and it's going to give you the option if you want to reset all the settings and leave the files on there, or you can remove the files. Again, that's totally up to you. Sometimes when I get to this point that I need to do that, I back up all the files and just do a complete reset. This will take quite a bit of time to do that. But again, this is sort of a last resort if you walk through all the, these steps. But those are 12 of my best tips to help you optimize the speed of your computer. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.